do the capacity test on these Dakota lithiums. If you like the videos that we're making, make sure that you subscribe and hit the like button and hit the bell. That way it helps get traffic to our videos. Another thing is, I, if you notice on my channel, I have mostly boat stuff, but then I have a couple golf cart things, really, around these lithium batteries. What does one have to do with the other? Well, eventually we're going to get lithium batteries for the boat, so I'm using this golf cart as a test bed to learn about lithium batteries because it's going to be a lot better to learn about the function and capacity and use of lithium batteries on a golf cart than to just stick them in a boat. The boat's a lot more complex and if you if the system you know doesn't work that's not good on a boat whereas a golf cart I can just go tow it home or you know get the golf cart or recover some other way but on a boat there's a safety issue so that's why we're doing these videos it's mainly surrounding not the golf cart it's actually about lithium batteries so anyways make sure you like and subscribe all right today we're going to conduct a test a actually a full capacity test on these dakota lithium batteries um, i've looked online on youtube and i haven't seen anybody do an actual full capacity test to see what they pull they're rated at 100 amp hours so you know, I don't know if they're 100, out, 100 hours exactly, 105, 90, I don't know. So we're going to find out. So I've got that 36 volt inverter right there. I've got my Renogy meter, and that should tell us how much we're pulling out. I've already started the test a little bit, and we're already down to 87 amp hours. It's set to 100. This will be a good way to set the zero. I only set it to what... Dakota says the batteries are rated for which is 100 amp hours so you set 100 amp hours in the meter and then that's how I drive around I just watch it and see how many amp hours it goes down to 100 assuming that they are actually 100 so a better way to set this would be to take them down to zero and of course the the Dakotas have a battery management and it should cut them off at the low voltage setting that's set in the battery management system so from there I can set the zero on the Renogy and then fully charge them and uh, then you'll see what the actual capacity is uh, probably a little bit more accurate than just setting it to the nominal 100 that the batteries are rated for plus I want to see if they give me a hundred so anyways and then I just got a heater here and uh, we're gonna fire it up inverter comes with a remote which works actually pretty good so we have 39.6 volts coming in, 123 going out, which is what matches this, 39.6. Uh, so let's fire up this old school heater. This thing works really good. Toastmaster. So we're pulling just under 40 amps 1500 watts which is what you would expect from a heater let's do this test see what kind of amp hours this uh, 36 volt pack can spit out oh, the fan just went off so this inverter works good and uh, I covered this in another video this is a 36 volt in so I just was able to uh, plumb it into the to the cart pack, and this is off uh, Amazon. You can get them on eBay as well. Seems to work pretty good. We actually ran around the neighborhood the other day because it was a little bit cold out. And we had a uh, electric blanket on our seat, and it actually worked very well. and And the electric blanket only pulled like 150 watts of power, not very much. So didn't reduce our range very much. So when I'm done with this test, and I have this set, we're going to do a full range distance test on this golf cart, which is just a, a 2001 TXT PDS uh, cart, nothing special about it, it's all stock with the exception of the batteries and whatever stereo and lights and stuff I put on it. So. I can do a capacity test on the batteries, but that won't tell us what the actual range is. So I have a Garmin GPS that can track 
with a high degree of accuracy. So when we're done with this test, we're going to go on a on a just a continuous ride until that battery pack dies. I want to know what the actual range is on this cart, and we're going to do that next. One of the reasons why I'm testing this now here in the garage is because when these batteries cut off, supposedly you just plug in the Dakota charger, which will reactivate the battery cutoff. I think it has to, the battery has to see above a certain voltage for battery charge to re, uh, reactivate the um, uh, battery management system. So I want to test that, make sure everything's operational uh, before we go on a drive. So when we go on the drive, we're going to just drive around the neighborhood continuously. And at some point, the cart's going to die. I'm going to bring my little generator, my little Ryobi 2200-watt uh, inverter generator and that battery charger so then I can plug it back in and charge it for a few minutes or you know 20 minutes whatever it takes just so we can make it back here but we're gonna just go in the neighborhood so that we're not too far so that when I recharge it uh, using the generator uh, you know we'll just have to sit there for a few minutes uh, and then just limp our way back to the uh, to the garage and then fully charge it here in the garage so anyways we'll finish this test and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay. Uh, we're not quite halfway through the test, but I'm going to check the individual batteries to see the balancing to make sure that one's not carrying the load too much. So, we've got the meter, and the individual batteries are 12.56 on this one, 12.56. Seven on that one and 12.54 on this one so they're pretty evenly matched um, and we're still going got the heater going 1500 watt inverter pulling still a steady 1500 watts 60 percent remaining the test should be done in about an hour and 29 minutes it's taking forever Okay, probably a third of the way through the test. Still got the uh, inverter running at max capacity, 1500 watts. As you can see, it's still drawing 1500 watts, about 40.4 amps at 37.4 volts. 37 amp hours remaining. According to this, about another 55 minutes. So everything's still working good. The balancing on the battery is dead even that one was a little bit lower I mean just minuscule but it was slightly lower now they're pretty much evened up um, to within one uh, hundredth of a volt so uh, uh, battery packs are all good all these wires are and battery packs themselves I mean they're room temperature I, mean, I can just feel a slight difference really it's hard to feel any difference at all and of course they're working at half their capacity I looked it up they're actually rated at hundred amps continuous and 200 amps for 10 seconds all right so we're down around 9% remaining and I guess the Renogy will flash begin to flash and beep when you're down to your last 10% I didn't program that in there I guess it's a just a feature at 10% it'll start to tell you the whole pack voltage still under load is 34.6 the amperage is actually dropping you can see we're at 1300 watts now everything's still working of course um, the uh, inverter output is down to 115 this battery is the lowest one it's putting out 10.72 and dropping pretty quick all right, I don't think we're going to be able to do the full test because my inverter uh, has an alarm, apparently. I guess it's still running, but it must be an undervolt alarm. So we'll see. 32 volts. This is the lowest cell. We're at 10. And it disconnected. No output. Okay, so the heater quit. But that is the fault of the inverter. So we pulled 92.5 out. I'm um, gonna have to, let's see, what can I do to get the rest out? 
All right, we're gonna finish this test a different way. I can't uh, get the inverter to do it the whole way because the inverter has internal um, protections. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a little bit of gas with my foot on the brake and draw some amperage. Nothing too crazy, I don't want the motor to have any problems. Just enough to get us to move. Now I'll put the brake on. And that should carry us the rest of the way. I got the lights on and the pedal depressed with the brake on. Pulling 15 amps. Okay, so the pack disconnected. And we have no more output. Because everything is on. But nothing is working. I had to watch it because obviously the Renogy meter is powered by the pack itself. So I got down to around, oh, I don't know, um, five amps left, five amp hours left. So that means I got 95 amp hours out of it. <clears throat> now, when I did that, <clears throat> when the pack finally disconnected, I had a uh, break on it and I put the pedal in it a little bit and started pulling quite a bit of amperage so I'm sure that just killed the voltage down below I probably could have gotten more out of it had I not stepped on it too much so it says it's 100 amp hours I got about 95 out of it um, hitting it pretty hard with golf cart you know draw on a motor so that's pretty heavy um, I don't know how to interpret that uh, it's not quite a steady state, you know, like um, like if it was a solar power system or something like that. Um, and the amp draw was pretty high, causing the voltage to drop. Uh, probably below 11 or whatever the cutoff is, 10, 10 something. So, uh, I guess that's okay. We'll see how it goes when I plug this back in. Alright, so it was actually the center battery that shut off. I uh, measured the voltages at the other two, and they still showed a voltage. And then that one showed basically nothing. Um, I think it shows re residual voltage from the other two. Um, anyways, uh, so it's charging now. Everything's woke up. I did measure voltage at each one, and they now have voltage. So they are woken back up. Uh, and this is good information. You know, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't see 100 amp hours. But what that means is that in a golf cart application where you can draw a lot of current and it, it really will make the uh, under under load it'll make the voltage nosedive so what that means for a golf cart um, once you get under 10 percent you really need to uh, manage your throttle and that's how you'll get home so really I know now I really need to be home by 10 percent and if I'm not home by 10 percent then I need to uh, be very careful on how much throttle I give it because uh, unlike say a solar application where you're pulling a steady state um, or pretty close close to steady state you know 10 20 30 amps um, and, it, and it, the voltage will remain steady and then it will just drop out as it hits that voltage when you are on a golf cart and you give it a lot of throttle you know you can dump that voltage real fast and then the battery management system will disconnect it so you have to be careful uh, when you get down on lithium battery that's going to be true of any lithium battery so when you're down around 10 percent on a lithium pack um, you want to be very close to home so when this says 100 amp hours and i believe you can get 100 amp hours and if you you know did this test a little bit differently <clears throat> out of these batteries um, but for the purposes of a golf cart and using these on a golf cart, I believe that you want to be careful going down below 10%. Not that it's going to destroy the batteries or anything. Of course, going down to 10% isn't the best for longevity for batteries. You don't want to do that every time. But for the sake of getting home, because if, if I didn't have a way to plug these in, you would not be getting home. So anyways, learned something from this test. And uh, that is pretty much that uh, be back home by 10% remaining. And even when you get, it seemed to behave a lot differently at 10%. Uh, the voltage began to drop rapidly.
and uh, the performance of the inverter started to change, you know, quite a bit. So I imagine the same will be true of the motor in the uh, controller system on this, uh, and that you could probably cause these batteries to shut down pretty easily when that voltage gets down that low. So it's a good test. So when I do the actual range test, I'm not going to run them out. I'm going to uh, run them down to 10%, and then I will limp it home, and uh, or at least you know don't floor it to get back home. So I don't want the voltage to drop too low so that the battery's cut out. Um, and then we'll see how many miles we get. I got a cul-de-sac out here. Maybe I'll just go do circles in the cul-de-sac and uh, see how much range we can get in real life. So we'll still do the second part of the test and see what the real life range is. We'll do that next time. All right, bye.